Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. How can you find out why you have rubber banding, a bad heat registration or similar issues? How do you know if it's the netcode that freaks out or if the server is suffering from a performance issue? Or if it is your connection to that server that causes the problems that you encounter? And how do you know if your connection to the server is good or bad? These are questions that I see quite frequently in the comments of my videos as well as on Battlelog and Reddit. Now, the spring patch did not include some of the netcode fixes that we have in the CTE, like the one for the collecting of damage issue where you receive the damage of multiple bullets in one update. Yet overall the netcode in retail is in a pretty good state now. However, it is not a time machine. What I mean by that is that we are playing a relatively fast paced online shooter and not chess. So as soon as the pings of the players have more than two digits, you will start to encounter problems. And it's not just Battlefield where you see that. If the delay between two players gets too high, then the netcode cannot compensate for that, as it can't actually foresee the future. That partly answers the question of how you can find out if your connection to the server is good or bad. When you join a server, then always choose one that has a very low ping, which will at the same time mean that it is located inside your own region. But for many players, this is easier said than done, as many regions simply don't have any servers and on console the signal strength icon that is used for the latency is just misleading and tricks people into joining servers on another continent because they get 4 out of 5 bars in the browser. Which means up to 199 milliseconds ping, which is not good at all when you play a first person shooter online. So your ping is one of the factors that determine if your connection to the server is good or bad. Here it is also very important that you have a stable ping, because if you have ping spikes where you go from 20 to 100 milliseconds and then back to 20, then this can lead to all kinds of really strange issues when you play online. I see this frequently when people use Wi-Fi and have signal strength issues, interference or too many different networks on the same channel. I have also seen this with Powerline where other devices caused interference. Generally speaking, the best connection type for your PC or console is still a good old network cable. So if your latency gets higher than 300 milliseconds, then you will see this clock icon on your screen. This means that the latency is way too high and you should better look for a different server. In my opinion, this icon should already show up at 150 milliseconds because that is where you already caused the damage around cover issue. The next factor is packet loss, which means that data sent by the client does not reach the server or data sent by the server does not reach your client. It's typically caused by network congestion where one of the devices between you and the server is simply not able to process all the data that arrives and so it has to drop some of the packets. A bad Wi-Fi connection is already able to cause that issue so you should look into how many networks use the same channel and if you can improve the signal or use a network cable instead. Also, if you encounter packet loss only at a specific time of the day or for a service in a specific country, then it's likely to be caused by network congestion or bad routing by your internet service provider. Besides that, faulty network drivers, firmware or network hardware are also able to cause packet loss. So it's obviously not good to have packet loss in or outbound and when you have more than 1% packet loss then the game will show you this icon here to tell you that some of the data does not reach its destination. So these two icons are quite nice as they inform you that something is going wrong. In addition to these icons we also have the network performance graph on the PC and the Xbox One, which allows you to monitor your connection in real time. So here you can then even see the smallest latency and packet loss spikes. It also shows us another important value, the packet queue. This is the amount of packets that are piling up inside your client to be sent to the server or to get the packet received message from the server. Obviously this number should be as low as possible. Mine is always between 1 and 2, but according to the developers you shouldn't see any major issues as long as this number is below 20. The graph also tells us how many shots we fired, how many hits were registered client side and how many hits were confirmed or registered server side. In a previous video I have explained how this works, why the values will always be different and why you can't say that the difference between hit server and hit client is how many hits were rejected by the server. If you want to find out more about this, then you should have a look at this specific video. The link is in the description. So that is the info that the game provides us in Battlefield 4 after the spring patch. It helps us to get a better idea of what is going on, but it could still be a bit better. The developers must have thought the same because in the CTE they now changed the existing icons and even added a few more. So let's begin with the latency icon, which now has two different states. 
where orange is a warning that something is not ideal and red means that you really have a problem that will result in a bad experience. So as long as your latency is between 0 to 199 milliseconds, you will not see any icon. If your latency is between 200 and 249 milliseconds, then you will get the orange icon. And when you have 250 or more milliseconds latency, then you will get the red icon. What is important here is that this is not just your ping. The latency value also includes the server processing delay. So you could have a ping of 15 milliseconds and a latency of 90 milliseconds. That would indicate that something is a bit wrong on the server side as there is a significant additional delay added on top of your ping. With a ping of 25 milliseconds, I usually have an in-game latency of about 35 milliseconds. So these are the current values, but the developers have already said that they might change them. So if you want to suggest a different value or some kind of other change, then you can do so in the topic on Reddit to which I link to in the description. I would show the orange icon between 100 to 149 milliseconds and the red one for 150 or more, because playing at more than 150 milliseconds already causes the damage behind cover issue. Then we have the same orange and red icons for the packet loss. The orange one shows up when you have between 1 to 4%, which is a combination of inbound and outbound packet loss. And the red one shows up when you have 5% or more. So these are the icons that we already had in retail, but in the CTE we got a few new ones too. The first one is the server performance icon, which will tell us that the server has some sort of problem. When we see the orange icon, then we will see occasional rubber banding and issues with the physics, but it will still be fairly playable. Once we see the red icon, we will experience severe rubber banding, stuttering player animations and other bad things. If you see the red icon on a server, then you better search for a new one. And if you are the owner of that server, then you should try to restart it or contact your game server provider. I can't wait for this icon to get into retail, because I have the feeling that after the spring patch a lot of the servers are struggling. Even on servers that kick players who have more than 75 milliseconds, I now constantly take damage behind cover among other really strange issues, and that icon could help a lot to find out what's going on. Now, when you play a fast paced game, then you want to be able to respond as fast as possible to what is happening. For that you have to run the game at a very high frame rate to not have a delay between what you see on your display and what is the current state of the game. Also when you play at high frame rates the game becomes more responsive. That means that even on a 60Hz monitor you can feel the difference between 60 and 120 frames per second because the game responds faster to your mouse movement and keyboard presses. This happens because the client physics update faster than when the frame rate is higher, which means less delay before the movement starts. So to tell the player that his frame rate is too low, Dicele added a new icon. The way this works is that it is linked to the tick rate of the game. So if your frame rate is less than 95% of the tick rate, then you get the orange icon. And when you see the red icon, then you will have serious trouble playing the game and you should change your graphic options to get a higher frame rate. Again these values that you see here are not final, so if you want to suggest different values, then you should head over to the reddit topic to which I linked in the description. My advice is that you should always aim for a stable 60 frames per second. If your frame rate goes up and down between 40 and 60, then this will result in the game responding differently to your input. And this means that among other things, you will have trouble to aim accurately. So it's really better to turn down some of the graphic settings and go for that stable 60 frames per second, rather than having a bit better graphics, but then have to deal with the game getting clunky. If you can, then you should absolutely go for 120 frames per second, even if you play on a 60Hz monitor. You will feel the difference in how the game responds to your mouse and keyboard input. And the last of the new icons that Dicele added will tell us if the refresh or update rate of your monitor is significantly lower than the tick rate of the game. This means that if you have a 60Hz monitor and play on a 30Hz server, then you will not get the new icon. If you play on a 60Hz tick rate server, then you will also not get the icon. But if you play on a 120Hz server with your 60Hz monitor, then this new icon will show up, because even though the game is running at a tick rate of 120Hz and renders 120 frames per second, the monitor is still not able to display more than 60 frames per second as it runs at a refresh rate of 60Hz. It is really good to have this icon, because even if you have an 144Hz monitor, you can still run the game at just 60Hz due to misconfiguration in the settings or because you don't use a DisplayPort or dual-link DVI cable, which is required for such high refresh rates. 
So these are the changes that Dysel did to the existing icons and the new icons that they introduced in the CTE. This will be a great help for the players to find out why they have issues in the game and to troubleshoot these issues. The values that are used here right now to trigger these icons are not final, so if you want to give feedback on the icons and the values that trigger them, then please have a look at the Reddit topic to which I link to in the description down below. The devs also said that there is one more indicator coming, but they didn't say which one. Now, the main reason why they changed all these indicators and added the new ones is that in the CTE the servers can now run at tick rates higher than 30Hz. And that significantly increases the networking requirements and it affects what the client has to be capable of to get the most out of these high rates. So if there's any kind of issue on a high tick rate server, then the game has to report that to the player in a meaningful way. What the developers covered so far are latency, packet loss, server performance, frame rate and the refresh rate of your monitor. What we have also seen in the CTE is that your internet traffic or bandwidth requirements increase quite significantly when you play on a 60 or 120 Hz server. So I have no idea if that will actually be the last indicator that Dysolay is going to add, but I think that it would make sense to have some sort of bandwidth icon to tell the player that his internet connection is not able to handle the amount of data the game is trying to send and receive, because this will result in massive problems for the player as we've seen in the CTE. If you have any further questions then please post them in the comments down below, as always I will try to answer as many of them as possible. If you enjoyed this video then give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care, my name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.